Hello, today we're looking at nutrition and health. We've already looked at a video about nutrition and the kinds of nutrition in food. However, today we're going to look at the impact on health. The first thing we need to look at is the idea of weight gain and weight loss. So this arrow represents energy in food going into a person. So that's the energy in food. And this is usually measured in either calories or joules. These are the units for measuring the amount of energy. Sometimes we use kilojoules as well. Now imagine we've got energy going in, in, to, in the food into a person. The person will carry out various activities throughout the day. And imagine then that the amount of energy that was transferred in their activities is actually less than the amount of energy they've taken in their food, shown by a smaller arrow. So that smaller arrow shows the energy transferred, actually a thinner arrow energy transferred through activities. So if more energy is taken in than transferred through activities, what's going to happen to the person? Well, let's compare the energies. This one is high. This one is low compared to the energy going in. So what you could imagine is the person would experience weight gain. Over a period of time, they would experience weight gain. If this continued for a long time, so if there was weight gain over a long period of time, continued weight gain, you could end up with a person suffering from what's called obesity. That's been quite severely overweight. And this has links with heart disease, uh, other diseases like diabetes. So these are both linked to obesity being well overweight. And there are other diseases as well that are linked to obesity. Now imagine the opposite scenario. Imagine we have a person and the amount of energy that they have in their food is less than the energy that they transfer through activities. What would happen then? Well, let's just make a note here. The amount of energy is low that goes in compared to the amount of energy that's used in activities. Low going in, high coming out. You can imagine that over time the person would lose weight. The person would lose weight. So we'd call this weight loss. And again, if this continues over a long period of time, it could lead to what's called starvation. Starvation. Now this has its own health issues as well. It could lead in the short term to tiredness and weakness because the body is not getting enough energy in the food. But it could also lead to what's called a poor immune system. The immune system helps protect against disease and starvation could weaken the immune system. It could also lead to what we call deficiency diseases, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Deficiency diseases where you're not getting enough nutrients or nutrients like vitamins and minerals. So both of these are examples of what we call malnutrition. Malnutrition. So malnutrition is when we have too much or not enough of one particular type of nutrition. So that's malnutrition. Now let's take a look at the idea of deficiency diseases. Now a common way these can happen is if we have a lack of vitamins or we have a lack of minerals. So these are deficiency diseases. One example of lack of vitamins is that of lack of vitamin A. Vitamin A helps with night vision. So if we don't have enough vitamin A in the diet, this could lead to poor night vision. So for example, if you're looking at an object in low light conditions, you might have difficulty in making out the object or seeing what the object is because of poor night vision due to lack of vitamin A. Another example is that of lack of vitamin C, which is another important vitamin in your diet, vitamin C. And if we have a lack of vitamin C over a period of time, this can lead to a disease called scurvy. Scurvy is when we have bleeding skin and bleeding gums as a result of a lack of that vitamin. So this is supposed to be some gums with the teeth there, and you can see that there's a little bit of bleeding going on there due to scurvy. We also have vitamin D as well. And if the body does not get enough vitamin D over time, this could lead to weakness in the bones or weak bones and that could lead eventually to a uh, disease called rickets, a deficiency disease called rickets where bones become bent because they're not 
um, strong enough to stay straight and support the body. So let's highlight those before we move on to lack of minerals. What happens if we have a lack of minerals? Well, one example of a mineral that's important is calcium. We've mentioned that in a previous video. If you don't have enough calcium in the diet, it could lead to weak or brittle bones and teeth. Brittle means they crack easily. Weak or brittle bones and teeth. There's also iron, which is classed as a mineral. And if you don't get enough iron, that means you're not going to get enough of a substance called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. And this is found in red blood cells. It has the job of carrying oxygen. If you don't have enough iron, you don't have enough hemoglobin, you don't have enough red blood cells, which means less oxygen is transported around the body to the cells. Less oxygen is transported to cells in the body, and this could lead to tiredness, weakness, and what we might call fatigue, which basically means tiredness. So these are the to uh, an example of two minerals that your body needs in order to function healthily. So this is deficiency diseases and previously other issues related to the number of calories that our body takes in versus how much is used when doing exercise.